Today I'm going to show you a quick demo of one of Singer's many buttonholer attachments. This particular version is part number 160506, and it's meant for low shank straight stitch machines. It was included with my Singer 66 machine when I bought it, but I'll demonstrate it on my Singer Featherweight for you in this video. First, let's unbox it. The previous owner kept their cash receipt from 1954, showing that she paid $9.95 Canadian. The attachment comes in a green oblong plastic case and includes five templates. I love its classic styling. You can see that the adjustment knob at the top moves the cloth clamp. The previous owner also included some extra templates, so that was a nice surprise. Each template indicates its size on the back for easy reference. Before we start, I want to recommend that when using the button holder to always test on practice fabric first to make sure you'll get the expected results you're looking for. To change the buttonhole template, first turn the white adjusting knob clockwise until the cloth clamp is one click past the most forward position. Turn the attachment upside down and open the back plate by pushing the metal slightly towards the back to release the lock. There is a small gap on both sides of the template so that you can pull out the current template with your fingers. Replace the template with the new one of your choice. If it won't drop in, you may need to turn the adjustment knob to slightly move the gears. Snap the back plate closed and the attachment is ready to use. Before you attach the button holder, you'll need to attach the cover plate to the machine. This will cover the feed dogs and allow the button holder to operate as expected. The bed of your machine should have screw holes to the right of the feed dogs. Make sure to line up the cover so that the screw will line up there and so that the needle will pass through the center of the needle hole in the plate. Screw the plate into place. Make sure you always use the cover plate before attempting to use your button holder. After attaching the cover plate, turn the hand wheel slowly to make sure that the needle will pass through the hole. Now that the cover plate is in place and the template is in, we can go ahead and attach the button holder. If you have another foot on the machine, you'll need to unscrew it and remove it before proceeding. Carefully guide the button holder into position, lining up the fork arm of the button holder to straddle the needle clamp screw and screw the attachment into the presser bar. Turn the hand wheel to make sure that the fork arm goes up and down with the movement. If it doesn't move, remove it and make sure the fork is around the needle clamp screw. The side of the attachment shows the width of bite settings. You can set it as wide as 6 or as narrow as 1. To move the slider, just push the lever down, slide it into the desired position, and allow it to move back up on its own. Thread your machine as usual and you're ready to start buttonholing. With the presser bar raised, turn the adjusting knob clockwise until the cloth clamp at the end of the attachment is all the way forward towards you. Slide your fabric under the attachment but above the plate cover and line up the needle directly above where you want the end of your stitched buttonhole to be. Lower the presser bar and make sure your fabric is held smoothly. Turn the adjusting knob clockwise some more so that the cloth clamp is back away from you. Stop once the needle has just passed the center front and will be on the pathway to start up the left side of the buttonhole. Sew until your buttonhole is all filled in. Thank you. 
I prefer the look of the buttonhole being sewn twice, so I went around twice until I reached the bottom left again. Raise the presser bar and remove the work from your machine. To cut the fabric between the buttonhole, you can put pins on each end of the buttonhole. Insert your seam ripper from the middle and work towards the ends. The pins will make sure you don't accidentally go too far into the threads. This video was just a basic look at the attachment, so I hope it serves you as a starting point for your buttonholing adventures. If this is your first visit to my channel, please be sure to check out my other vintage sewing machine videos. Please give this video a like or a comment if it was helpful. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on Craftcore.